Let's see about the corneal dystrophies. What are corneal dystrophies? There is a group of disorders which are characterized by opacities of the cornea which are non-inflammatory, inherited, bilateral with no vascularization. These are four points about corneal dystrophies. They are non-inflammatory, inherited, bilateral in nature and they do not have any vascularization. And these are not associated with systemic diseases. And the manifestation occasionally occurs at birth, but it is most usually during the first or second decades of life and sometimes even later in life. Classification of corneal dystrophies. The corneal dystrophies can occur in the epithelial or subepithelial layers, Bowman's layer, corneal stroma or the decimates membrane or endothelium. The dystrophies in epithelial or subepithelial region are epithelial basement membrane dystrophy, epithelial recurrent erosion dystrophy, Meesman dystrophy, Lish epithelial dystrophy, gelatinous drop like dystrophy. And those occurring in Bowman's layer are Reese Buckler dystrophy and Thiel Benke dystrophy. And the dystrophies in the stromal layer of cornea are lattice dystrophy, granular dystrophy, macula dystrophy. Schindler crystalline dystrophy and central cloudy dystrophy of Francois. The dystrophies in the decimates membrane or the corneal endothelium are Fuchs endothelial dystrophy, posterior polymorphous dystrophy, congenital hereditary endothelial dystrophy, and X linked endothelial dystrophy. Let's see about the epithelial and subepithelial dystrophies. First is epithelial basement membrane dystrophy which is most common anterior corneal dystrophy. This is also known as map dot fingerprint dystrophy. The pattern of inheritance is not documented. The gene involved is TGF beta 1 gene and it, its onset is during the adult life. The symptoms of which are usually asymptomatic or there can be recurrent corneal erosion which can cause irregular astigmatism. The patterns of lesions are either maps or dots. Maps are irregular islands of thickened grey hazy epithelium. This is, these are the maps. Irregular islands of thickened grey hazy epithelium. Next is the dots which are irregular round oval or comma shaped non staining putty grey opacities. These are the dots. Fingerprint lines which are parallel curvilinear lines usually paracentral these are the fingerprint lines. Next are blebs, blebs are like pebbled glass these are the blebs. Next is epithelial corneal erosion dystrophy which usually occurs in the first decade of life autosomal dominant in inheritance. The onset is typically in 4 to 6 years, symptoms are precipitated by minimal trauma or it can occur spontaneously with attacks. The signs are corneal erosions and subepithelial blebs. The image shows the epithelial corneal erosion dystrophy. Third is subepithelial mucinous corneal dystrophy which is also autosomal dominant in inheritance. Onset is in the first decade of life, course there is progressive loss of vision in adolescence. Symptoms include recurrent corneal erosions and the signs are bilateral subepithelial opacities and haziness. The picture shows subepithelial mucinous corneal dystrophies. Next is Meesman corneal dystrophy, which is also known as juvenile hereditary epithelial dystrophy. And the variant is Stalker Holt variant associated with the genes keratin K3 and keratin K12. Symptoms, the patient is typically asymptomatic or the patient may have mild visual reduction, glare and light sensitivity. Signs present of multiple tiny epithelial vesicles. So, these three figures show the Meesman corneal dystrophy. Fifth is the Lish epithelial corneal dystrophy. 
in which there are band shaped and whorled microcystic dystrophies onset is in childhood and is slowly progressive this is an x linked dominant dystrophy symptoms the patient is usually asymptomatic and the signs include whorl like radial band shaped flame or feather shaped and club shaped the lush epithelial corneal dystrophy can be of any type the a picture is localized whorl like gray opacity on direct illumination b is sclerotic scatter demonstrating localized whorl like gray opacity and the c picture is the retro illumination determining the crowded microcysts next is the gelatinous drop like corneal dystrophy this is also known as sub epithelial amyloidosis it is progressive in nature and the gene involved is tumor associated calcium signal transducer 2 this is autosomal recessive in inheritance the symptoms include significant decrease in vision photophobia irritation redness and tearing these figure shows gelatinous drop like corneal dystrophies signs are band shaped keratopathy or mulberry configuration superficial vascularization and stromal opacification or kumquat like lesions which appear later in life next coming to the baumann layer dystrophies out of which the first one is reis buckler's corneal dystrophy The onset is in childhood there is progressive loss of vision and the gene involved is TGF beta 1 autosomal dominant in inheritance symptoms are impairment of vision from the childhood and recurrent corneal erosions signs irregular and coarse geographic like opacities are seen the three figures show the reis buckler's corneal dystrophy next is steel benke corneal dystrophy here there is honeycomb shaped corneal dystrophy onset childhood there is slow progressive loss of vision autosomal dominant inheritance symptoms include recurrent corneal erosions signs a symmetrical sub epithelial honeycomb reticular opacities as we have see clearly in the picture there are honeycomb shaped corneal dystrophy next is grayson wilbrand corneal dystrophy onset is in the first and second decade of life progressive in nature autosomal dominant inheritance symptoms are decreased to normal visual activity and presence of recurrent corneal erosions signs there is diffuse mottling to diffuse gray white opacities which extend anteriorly into the epithelium so the stromal corneal dystrophies these are tgf beta 1 corneal dystrophies macular corneal dystrophy schindler corneal dystrophy congenital stromal corneal dystrophy fleck corneal dystrophy posterior amorphous corneal dystrophy and central cloudy dystrophy of francois first is tgf beta 1 corneal dystrophies which are of two types las latus corneal dystrophy or granular corneal dystrophy Lattice is in turn of two types, classic and gel solen. Classic type is LCD1 and gel solen type is LCD2. Whereas the granular corneal dystrophy is also further of two types, classic GCD1 and granular lattice GCD2. These are the features of lattice corneal dystrophy. Presence of glassy amyloid lines as we can see from this picture and amyloid deposits which are stained with Congo red stain. these are all the amyloid deposits stained with congo red stain granular corneal dystrophy this is the granular corneal dystrophy 1 gcd2 and the hyaline deposits are stained by mason's trichrome stain next is macular corneal dystrophy these are the images showing macular corneal dystrophy and the histopathology shows mucopolysaccharide deposits which are stained by alcyon blue stain the macular corneal dystrophy is also known as greeno corneal dystrophy type 2 or fair spotted dystrophy the genetic locus for which is located in 
16 Q chromosome, long arm of 16 and the gene is CHST6, inheritance autosomal recessive and it is childhood on onset and it is slowly progressive in nature. Symptoms are recurrent erosions which are very common and visual impairment occurs between first and third decade. Signs, presence of dense, elevated, poorly delineated opacities centrally in the anterior stroma and peripherally in the posterior stroma. Also there is diffuse stromal haze and corneal sensations are reduced. Next is Schindler corneal dystrophy. This is an image of Schindler corneal dystrophy. This is a histopathology sh showing phospholipids and cholesterol deposition stained by oil red dose stain. The Schindler corneal dystrophy is also known as hereditary crystalline stromal dystrophy of Schindler. Genetic locus is UBI AD1 in the short term of first chromosome, inheritance autosomal dominant associated with hyperlipoproteinemia, onset and progression early infancy at birth and slowly progressive, symptoms gradual visual impairment and glare, signs round ring shaped opacity in the central cornea and prominent arcus senilis. The decimals membrane and endothelial corneal dystrophies, they are huge endothelial corneal dystrophy, posterior polymorphous corneal dystrophy, congenital hereditary endothelial dystrophy 1, congenital hereditary endothelial dystrophy 2 and X linked endothelial corneal dystrophy. The clinical features first is stage of corneal gutata. This is the healthy cornea and this is the presence of gutata, corneal gutata which are nothing but depressions. The next stage is stage of endothelial decompensation and the third stage stage of bullous keratopathy and the fourth stage is stage of scarring. Endothelial decompensation, bullous keratopathy and stage of scarring. Treatment for this is giving 5% NaCl, warm air blown on ice bandage soft contact lenses penetrating keratoplasty and 0.5 percent timolar. Next the posterior polymorphous corneal dystrophy, autosomal dominant inheritance, onset is early childhood and it is slowly progressive in nature associated with PPCD1, PPCD2 and PPCD3 gene mutations. Next is X-linked endothelial corneal dystrophy. This is similar to CHED2 except that the inheritance is X-linked dominant and the genetic locus is short arm of 25, sorry long arm of 25. Lastly, let us see the difference between the corneal degeneration and the corneal dystrophy. In the corneal degeneration is non-hereditary whereas the dystrophy is hereditary. Degeneration can be unilateral or bilateral, dystrophy is always bilateral. Degeneration is associated with local and systemic conditions. Dystrophy is also non-inflammatory. The degeneration appears in elder age group, dystrophy appears in younger age group. The degeneration vascularization may be present whereas in dystrophy there is absolutely no vascularization. So the vascularization is absent. That is all about the corneal dystrophies. Thank you.